my latest acquisition. No longer, or at least for now, is there uh, fixing the TDS 540 oscilloscope. We're on to spectrum analyzers. And this is my latest acquisition, which is an HP 8590B. Does uh, 9 kilohertz to 1.8 gigahertz. And uh, this thing's in pretty good shape. Um, I've cleaned it up a lot. Took it completely apart. Show you a little bit of the inside. There's the uh, power supply. And here's the uh, third converter. And the signal path moves in this direction. This is all the uh, RF mixers and amplifiers here. <coughs> the uh, IF basically ends here. So your IF path starts, I mean your RF basically ends here, your IF path starts here. This co these covers, with that, it's not such a good idea to have the covers off and, and it introduces a lot of noise into the signal path. But it's all for a reason because uh, essentially the problem with this thing is there's one problem. And it seems to be that it's uh, failing on its confidence test uh, for the IF bandpass filters. And there's two boards, A11 and A13. In between there's an amp right here, which handles the uh, IF bandpass. And one of those boards is the problem, I think. Uh, besides that, it works pretty good, um, as you can tell. Pretty cleaned up. It's the front again. I have taken it completely apart. Power supply as well. Cleaned out all the dirt. And this is the area that I'm getting. Now, if you notice, or let me explain a bit. You basically have per board uh, four bandpass filters. Two of them are LC filters, which are uh, inductor uh, capacitor based filters, and the other two are crystal based filters. The crystal based filters handle bandpass from 1 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz. The, um, the LC filters handle from uh, 100,000 kilohertz up to 5 megahertz. And basically what the confidence test does is it compares the noise floor starting from the highest bandwidth, the flattest response, which would be 5 megahertz, down. It steps it down each time and it expects the noise floor to drop, which would be logical. Uh, I don't know what the expected value is. I've, I've, I haven't been able to find it anywhere, but from what I understand on some of the Yahoo forums and so forth, it's about 5 dB. Anyway, let's power this thing up and see what we get. And then you'll see what the problem is. Now, again, it's going to be noisier because the, the caps are not on the uh, in the cage. But that's not really the problem here yet. We can still get an idea of what we're talking about. And you notice there's some DS LEDs down here. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's on the uh, motherboard, on the uh, processor board, I should say. If all of those go out, well, then we're okay. And they have gone out. They always do. And here we go. It, it works. Okay. At least it somewhat works. So let's turn up the brightness a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is, first of all, change the amplitude. Then change the uh, sweep time. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to change it to. Single sweep. Uh, let's see. 
Okay. And now it should stop once it does a single sweep. <laughs> yeah, this might take a little bit. Okay, so it's stopped. Now, we're going to start with the highest, or the flattest, I should say, bandpass filter, which is 5 megahertz. And I'm just going to run down each one. Basically, what I'm going to do is start the sweep and then step down each one and we'll see what the note what happens to the noise floor so here we go now as you can tell we basically start high step down step down step down step down very big drop maybe too big maybe that's the problem at 100 kilohertz and then when we switch to the crystal um filters we get that spike and then it's it steps down uh i don't really know if there's a problem with the crystal filters or whether it's not essentially that the um, lc filter the last one the hundred thousand kilohertz filter is attenuating too much and then the crystal filter is doing what it's supposed to do and the confidence routine is essentially uh, interpreting that as the noise floor being higher than the lowest no noise floor at 100k which would be here you notice it never gets lower it, it never gets below that which is not what it should which what it should do it should be a stair-stepped pattern all the way down so that's that's the problem <clears throat> is trying to figure out what that is now i have a extender cord for pulling the boards out and testing and the strategy is is to basically flatten out each bandpass filter one at a time and see if that restores the stair step pattern in other words basically try to isolate the bad uh filter and then go from there but before I do that, what I'm going to do is test whether or not the proper voltages are being sent from the DAX on the analog interface to the IF bandpass filter. This, by the way, is the analog interface card. And there's three lines. There's a BW5, which selects between the LC filters and the crystal filters. Oh, uh, there's a BW7, which selects the frequency for the LC filters, if I'm not mistaken. It might be the other way around. I'll have to look at the schematics. I haven't looked at them in a while. But I think BW7 selects the frequency. All of these are by varying voltages, obviously, of where the LC filter is, which would be the 100,000K to 5 megahertz bandpass. And then... Uh, BW6 selects the um, the the bandpass for the um, the crystal oscillators. So you have uh, BW5, which essentially figure it tells it which set to to use. BW7 is the LC, and uh, BW6 is for the crystal uh, filters. I might have it backwards for BW7 and BW6, but I don't think so. It doesn't really matter. I mean, once I do the test, I'll, I'll, I'll inform you all. But um, anyway, uh, the point is I want to make sure that it's actually sending the proper... On the schematic, I have the proper figures that it should be sending, and I just want to see if it's close to those figures to rule out the DAC on the analog interface that that's not the problem. I don't anticipate that is the problem. I think it's one of those cards and one of those filters. And these this is all through hole and it's discrete components. And I do have the schematics, so it shouldn't be hard to fix, but it is trying to figure out what it is. Um, anyway, hopefully this repair will be easier than the TDS 540. That was a nightmare. And um, I'll set everything up and go through it and then I will record another video to let you all know exactly how the DAC test turned out. Okay.
hope you enjoy this beginning of a new series, a new adventure of fixing a spectrum analyzer. Okay, bye.